Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Uh, should be reviewing, hopefully it'll be uploaded, probably supposed to be at the end of April 30th, but probably be around May 1st when you see this. But, want to review a few films that First Power 100 had sent me. So the first one of course is Natural Born Killers. This is a film, this is the director's cut, which I don't know what the difference is between this and the original cut other than I know there's a scene here where you see Tommy Lee Jones' uh, head that was cut off or ripped off and controversial shot of reporter Robert Downey Jr.'s hand wound. Well I guess you do see the hand wound. <clears throat> but Natural Born Killers, this is a film directed by Oliver Stone. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this film. This film is definitely a trip to watch. Not really a film I'm going to rewatch over and over again, to be honest. It's just, it's just not. But it is definitely an interesting film. It doesn't sound weird. This is sort of the film that Tarantino did not direct. Because... Kind of like what you would see Tarantino do in Kill Bill, how he does all these crazy things, like he has animation, he's got you know, black and white, then color, and weird pieces of music. And it's like, wow, Oliver Stone was doing this before Tarantino was doing that. Of course, Kill Bill is much more of a fun, entertaining movie because it's just a revenge film, while this is with these two people, sickos. Mickey and Mallory, played by Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. And pretty much they're on a murder spree. First half of the film, they're on this, you know, they talk about them, the murder spree, the media, sort of making them almost into heroes, at least to some people, and pretty much getting them pretty famous. And the second half of the film is they've been caught and they're in prison, and sort of what happens during their stay in prison. But what I mean by that is it does a lot of interesting things, different film stock. For example, there's regular film, there's Super 8 used, there's uh, I think 35 millimeter and 16 millimeter. They use all different kinds of film stock to film certain sequences. There's a lot of scenes that are shot at an angle, weird pieces of music, uh, a lot of subliminal flashes of bunnies or little bits of animation or uh, Native Americans and just or maybe there's a shot of Woody Harrelson just covered in blood that you see for a, a split second or two seconds and then it goes back to the film. That's what I mean. It's definitely a film that I would say keeps your interest because you're wondering what the hell is going to pop on the screen next. It's really a take on the media and how they, I guess to put it, there's a sequence where these two visit a guy who happens to be Native American and he's talking to them and you see on either Mickey or Mallory like too much TV. <laughs> And a lot about the media, because the other people in the cast, you have Robert Downey Jr., who's a reporter. Well, I don't know if you call him a reporter. He's one of these guys who talk, sort of, not really a talk show, but interview serial killers, things like that, wants to get ratings, and Robert Downey Jr.'s character. I think he has an Australian accent, very thick Australian accent in this film. His character is really a dick. You know, he guys go from pregnant. He got this co-pregnant, so she had to marry his boss's daughter, but then he's sleeping around, and then he does some other shit at the end. He only cares about ratings and stuff. You have Tommy Lee Jones as a warden, just a real redneck. You have Tom Sizemore as a cop, but he like strangles a prostitute, and he beats the shit up, wants to rape Juliette Lewis during the second half of the film. So a lot of characters are not really the most likable group of people. But it's taken on me where you have people being interviewed. You even have Stephen Wright and other people being interviewed. And you have 
talking to fans of Mickey and Mallory saying, oh yeah, you know, well, yeah, I wouldn't be, I value life, but if I was a kid, I want to be Mickey and Mallory and how they're famous for their mass murders and how they kill people, but they leave, usually leave one witness. And they, Oliver Stone does different things. For example, there's the opening sequence where you have this pretty much fucking people up in this cafe. But, like, he shoots a gun, Woody Harrelson shoots a gun, and you see the point of view of the gun go towards this woman, and then it stops there, and, like, twirls around, and has this, like, almost like Looney Tunes type of music in the background. But it's also a very violent film as well. Or someone throws a, a knife, and you see the knife, like the camera's here, you see the knife going through the window. It sounds just very classical music, and music that, wow, that's really that for the scene. And a lot of it, just different stuff. For example, just Woody Harrelson and Julia Lewis are in a motel room, and at times, they have uh, screen projections. For example, they're talking, but on that wall, they'll be like, horses or fire or something like that even get to the point where you they you get a little bit of backstory on these characters for example Juliet Lewis you find out her family life bef before she met Woody Harrelson and leading up to meeting Woody Harrelson and but the whole thing plays off as if it was a sitcom it's called I Love Mallory or I Dream of Mallory or something. I forget the actual title. But yeah, Rodney Dangerfield, who I've already I've always seen as you back to school, easy money. But here just playing a real dirtbag father. He's he's an asshole. He's always in his he's in his boxers. Uh, talking down to Juliet Lewis, fondling her, so you get a bit of the, there's incest where he's ab well he's abusing her that he has raped her before touched her before you get a lot of that stuff and yet it's playing off like a sitcom so yeah like laugh track and ooh or stuff in the background and then Woody Harrelson comes and they meet and later on they go back and they Rodney Danger Dangerfield's character gets killed and then the mother for not doing anything she gets burned to death. So it doesn't mean that you have violence, but then it's always filmed and you're wondering what the hell they're going to do next. What are you going to see next? You see Saluno flashes. Uh, you have like, Mickey and Mallory de decide they want to get married, and so Woody Harrison cuts his hand and her hand. They get together, and the blood drips down. And then it goes into animation, where animation the blood like splits. and That's what I mean. It has this, this weird vibe sort of surreal, I don't know, it's supposed to be like a dream state or what would go inside the mind of a serial killer. It's definitely an interesting way of doing a film. But at the same time, these two, you don't like these two. These two are sickos. I mean, they're filing each other while there's a poor woman tied up with a leg spread and mouth, you know, tape on her mouth, and these are not nice people at all but I know the big message in this film is the media because when it, basically they meet this guy this Native American guy Woody Harrelson has a dream of what happened to him as a kid like he's a little boy his mom's talking shit to him and you know, he freaks out shoots the Native American guy didn't mean it they get bit by rattlesnakes and some other stuff happens and they pretty much get captured. And so the second half of the film is them in prison where Tom Lee Jones meets with Tom Sizemore and they have this idea, well, we have an idea when we take this guy out, he's going to a mental asylum, maybe there's an accident and maybe there's a breakout and pretty much a plan to get rid of, get rid of them, get rid of these guys. At the same time, you got Robert Downey Jr.'s character, who's very much about the ratings and wanting, you know, a, a live interview during Super Bowl Sunday. So it's the media, and even Woody Harrelson and Julia Lewis, they're going to a trial, and yeah, people who are fans, they're like, "Murder me, Mick, Mickey," and 
Although, you know, I'm watching this, and that, I think that's kind of the thing that turns me off a little bit of the film. Is that I can't imagine people being that gun ho about these two who have murdered innocent people. And, you know, maybe it's just the fact that I've seen a lot of, you know, violence in the media and. But it doesn't just go with that. It does show that these two have had a bad, I don't know what you want to call it, childhood and stuff has happened in the past. But it shows, I guess it's showing that the media doesn't help matters either. It sort of turns these people into celebrities, which unfortunately that is the case. My idea, you know, maybe it's meant, I almost want to say it's over the top, but I think Oliver Stone knows that it's over the top. So he wanted to do it over the top, but it still doesn't get rid of the message of that there seems to be this joint thing where the because what happens with the media is during it that sort of helps spark this riot where the prisoners are listening to what Woody Harrelson is saying, and he says that you know he's a natural born killer and about how. Everyone's got a bit of the demon inside them, and so on and so forth. And I guess the prisoners riled up for a riot. And then also keeping Robert Downey Jr.'s character alive, and they get Mallory, and they fuck up Tom Sizemore, they get out of the prison. And even Robert Downey Jr.'s character, he. The, the guards are confused and they shoot some of the hostages on accident. Robert Downey Jr. gets pissed and he's shooting some of the guards, and you're like, wow. What a creep this guy is, too. It did to the end where, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is like, wait, wait a minute, you guys leave a witness. It's like, yeah, it's your camera. So Robert Downey Jr. himself is killed by his own media, his own... He's the victim of his own crime, so to speak. <clears throat> and I will say for this film... It kept me interested because of the way it was filmed, how it's sometimes a slow-mo, sometimes dialogue cuts out on purpose, sometimes you have teeny bits of animation, or you see uh, some liminal flashes. And For example, you have other stuff. When Woody Harrelson is being interviewed by Robert Downey Jr., there's moments where you see him being interviewed, and all of a sudden it's in like a black and white 50s family going to a TV and they just popped Woody Harrelson's interview like about, about this big on the TV and people watch it. This is a really weird, strange sort of, I don't know if you'd call it experiment, but that's what I mean. It's, it almost seems like a, a film that Tarantino didn't do or... Like if someone said this was written by Tarant, if this was a film by Tarantino, it says here the script is by David Veloz, Richard Rutowski, and Oliver Stone. It is. I see some of the stuff that kind of reminds me of what Tarantino would do in Kill Bill, one and two. So I don't know. Maybe Tarantino was influenced by this film a bit. Uh, for some reason, I thought he had a hand in writing this, but that might have been another film. I'm not sure. You know what? Actually, it says right here, story by Quentin Tarantino. Okay. I could have sworn Tarantino. I thought, yeah, it says here, story by Quentin Tarantino. I guess he didn't do the screenplay, but he came up with the story. So the story, huh. Interesting. So he came up with the story of it. Maybe that's a reason. For those wondering, the features, there's a commentary by Oliver Stone. There uh, some casting crew interviews, including Tom Lee Jones and Juliet Lewis and Woody Harrelson, Tom Sizemore. Pretty much a little making of. And you have deleted scenes, which are interesting. For example, there was a scene with Dennis Leary that was shot, where basically, sort of like Spike Lee's... Which film was that? Do the Right Thing, was it? Where they're talking right into the camera. And Dennis Leary's in jail and he's talking. I guess about life, about the famous, infamous Mickey and Mallory. 
You also have a sequence with Ashley Judd in a courtroom scene where she gets killed by Woody Harrelson. You have an alternate ending where actually Woody Harrelson and Julia Lewis, their characters get killed. They get killed. And that's the thing, in the actual ending, pretty much they get away with it. They escape fucking Robert Downey Jr. and they get away with it scot free. But the alternate ending is they get killed. I just say that during the prison riot, a lot of it's kind of really hard to watch. I wouldn't say it's gory, but the viciousness of some of the, the prisoners going on with it's a uh, kind of made me wince a little bit. I will admit, maybe that's the point. This is one of those films that it's hard to talk about. It's hard to talk about. I don't really want to go tremendously in depth on it. I thought the acting was good. Woody Harrelson really nailed it. He really bought him as a psycho. Juliette Lewis, I'm not really the biggest fan of Juliette Lewis, but she did fine in this. Tom Lee Jones, big fan of him as an actor, played a good redneck. Robert Downey Jr., a little bit over the top with his Australian accent. A little bit over the top at times. I'm like, geez, really? You're going that big or that loud with your... You know, fake Australian accent. I don't know. Tad Sizemore, he did fine. I'm trying to find the best way to put words into this. It's definitely an interesting film. It's a film that is... And when I say interesting, the way it's shot, the way it uses different camera, different cameras, different techniques, a lot of, like I said, with the bullet and the knife going slow-mo, you see from their point of view. And from their point of view, like, you see the bullet here. Like, if you turn the camera, you see the bu bullet right in front of the camera. Or, same with the, was it a knife or a butcher knife? I can't remember. Definitely kept me involved, kept me interested. I hmm, wonder what they're going to do next. Same with the Rodney Dangerfield, who plays a real creep in this. Played a real creep in this. And how it was all done in sort of a sitcom type of matter. And like I said, it's... It has themes about the media, about... You know, turning these killers into celebrities and you have people who are just worried about ratings and worried about themselves and yeah, that aspect to it. Which I guess to be honest was never the most interesting aspect to me because well, I guess to be frank, there's a lot of films I enjoy that are violent, that are action movies that are have a lot of death and destruction and I just because I just I think of them as movies and entertainment and I like them for that so I don't know if it's going after mainly the people who report the news or, or what kind of straight because you're Oliver Stone can make some violent movies as well but uh, I know he's going for a theme it's not really a theme that I mean I can agree with the news Movies and stuff, I don't know. But I'm not sure it's really about movies. Although, I didn't listen to the com I listened to teeny parts of the commentary. I know he mentioned that a lot of times, you know, people make films for violence sake. And I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's fucking higher than shit. I don't know where I'm going with this. But anyway, Natural Born Killers, well acted film. Interesting film, especially the way it's shot. At times, it's wince-inducing with the violence, especially during the prison riot. Especially with these two seem very cold, with not much remorse for their killings. Definitely the way it's shot always keeps you wondering what they're going to do next. I mean, they're in a, a store to find medicine. Everything's green. And that's what I mean. It sort of keeps you interested. On what they're going to do next. Can't really say it's not really a satisfying ending. 
Because, you know, they just get away. There's no comeuppance or anything like that. It's not like you have fun spending time with these two characters. I mean, that's another thing. It's not... You have fun spending time with these two. But anyway, it's Natural Born Killers. It's a well-done film, I can say. It's definitely a well-done film. I'm just rambling right now. I don't know what more I can say, but... Either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And stay tuned for another review. And later.